Inshallah, after you hear my answer, your view will completely change on the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is very clearly mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 5, hadith number 3896, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he contracted the marriage with Aisha Radela Anha at the age of 6 and he consummated the marriage after she had completed the age of 9. And this information is also repeated in Sahih Muslim and various Sahih Hadith. There is no out of doubt that yes, the Prophet did contract the marriage at the age of 6 with Aisha Radela Anha. She was the daughter of Abu Bakr an, the first caliph of Islam. There are various hadith. I know that there are some so-called pseudo-Islamic da'is or pseudo-Islamic scholars who say, no, uh, the age of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, it was in 9, it was 19, and they give various arguments. They say in the Arabic language, it's Ashra and Tessa, 10 plus 9, the 10 was missing. Actually, it is 19 and various other things. All this is totally nonsense. All this is totally nonsense. There is not an out of doubt as far as the age of Aisha, Aisha Radila Anha, was concerned. The marriage was contracted at the age of 6 and consummated at the age of 9 with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is mentioned in the Sahihain. It is a muttafiq alaik. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. It is without doubt the sanad is absolutely sahih with the highest accuracy there are various say hadith there are also historical records so as far as those so-called muslims who say that it is not a fact that the prophet consummated the marriage at the age of nine with aisha Anna, they are totally misguided and the knowledge of islam is very pure it is very poor We've seen Sheikh Yasser Qadi tell Muslims to stop lying about Aisha by claiming that she was older than nine when her prophet penetrated her with his 54-year-old penis. And oh Muslims, don't apologize for the truth and don't distort the truth. There are, there are Muslims that try to deny this. Oh, he didn't marry Aisha as a young girl. Yeah, look, that's not the way forward. We don't lie for the sake of our religion. Astaghfirullah. We have the truth. We're not going to cover up the truth if people are, find it embarrassing. This is the reality. Deal with it. Our Prophet married a young girl, and it was fine for the time. That's right. Don't be ashamed of your Prophet. Be proud of the fact that he spread the legs of a prepubescent little girl and forced his penis inside of her. And we're proud of that. People who think that sex with children is okay generally have to keep quiet about that. They don't get to go around running their mouths about the joys of pedophilia. If they were to openly promote pedophilia, they would run into some problems. Anyone who openly promotes pedophilia in the 21st century will be publicly exposed and condemned. There's only one exception. Where do you see grown men openly discussing sex with little girls and getting away with it? Where do you see grown men publicly trying to convince other grown men that there's nothing wrong with marrying little girls? Only in Islam, and it's just part of dawah. And the better you are at defending pedophilia, the more popular you'll become as a Muslim apologist. Only in Islam. If an atheist came out tomorrow and said, there's nothing wrong with a grown man having sex with a little girl, he would be shunned by the atheist community. If a Christian came out tomorrow and said, there's nothing wrong with a grown man having sex with a little girl, he would be shunned by the Christian community. But in Islam, not only is it perfectly acceptable to defend and promote sex with little girls, it's apparently one of the defining features of Islam's top scholars and most beloved apologists. Why are these grown men in Western nations in the 21st century openly defending and promoting pedophilia because their prophet was a pedophile because their prophet was a pedophile so what do islam's most trusted hadith say about aisha
Sahil Bukhari, Volume 7, Book 62, Hadith 15, narrated Aisha. Allah's Messenger said to me, You have been shown to me twice in my dreams. A man was carrying you in a silken cloth and said to me, This is your wife. I uncovered it, and behold, it was you. I said to myself, If this is a dream from Allah, he will cause it to come true. Now keep in mind, Aisha would have been about two years old when Muhammad had this dream. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 7, Book 62, Hadith 88, narrated Urwa. The Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old. And she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. Do the math. Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad consummated the marriage and she stayed with him for nine years. So she would have been 18 when Muhammad died, not when he married her. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 58, Hadith 236, narrated Hisham's father. Khadija died three years before the Prophet departed to Medina. He stayed there for two years or so, and then he married Aisha when she was a girl of six years of age. And he consummated that marriage when she was nine years old. There are some discrepancies here. Some hadith say she was seven, but most of them place her at six years old at the time of the marriage. But they all agree she was nine when Muhammad had sex with her. Sahih Muslim, Book 8, Number 3311, Aisha, Allah be pleased with her, reported that Allah's Apostle, may peace be upon him, married her when she was seven years old, and she was taken to his house as a bride when she was nine, and her dolls were with her. And when he, the Holy Prophet, died, she was 18 years old. Let me ask you something. Does a grown woman still play with dolls? Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 8, Book 73, Hadith 151, narrated Aisha. I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's Messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves, but the Prophet would call them to join and play with me. The playing with dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at the time as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. Well, there goes that theory. And just to further illustrate Muhammad's mindset concerning the marriage of young virgin girls, I want to read two more hadith that really have nothing to do with Aisha, but they give us a glimpse into the mind of Muhammad. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 7, Book 62, Hadith 17, narrated Jabir bin Abdullah. When I got married, Allah's Messenger said to me, What type of lady have you married? I replied, I have married a matron. He said, why don't you have a liking for the virgins and for fondling them? Jabir also said, Allah's Messenger said, why didn't you marry a young girl so that you might play with her and she with you? Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 52, Hadith 211, narrated Jabir bin Abdullah. When I took the permission of Allah's Messenger, he asked me whether I had married a virgin or a matron, and I replied that I had married a matron. He said, why hadn't you married a virgin who would have played with you and you would have played with her? I replied, O oh Allah's Messenger, my father died or was martyred and I have some young sisters, so I felt it not proper that I should marry a young girl like them who would neither teach them manners nor serve them. So I have married a matron so that she may serve them and teach them manners. It seems that this guy has more of a correct perspective on marriage and family than Muhammad did. He had some young sisters, so he didn't think it was right to marry a young girl their same age. So he married a woman a little bit older who could help him raise the girls. Muhammad didn't think like that. Muhammad wasn't thinking about the family. He was thinking about what would be more fun. It's all about sexual pleasure for Muhammad. It's all about what would be more fun for me as a man. And he also encouraged others to think that way. So there you have it, the truth about Aisha from Islam's most trusted hadith. You can either accept what they say and deal with it even though it's embarrassing, or you can keep brushing the truth under the carpet.